friends, good morning. Thank you so much for joining me for Storytime with the Fond du Lac District Library. My name is Miss Alice and I'm so excited to meet all of you. So my story time today is going to be a couple of my favorite songs and my favorite books. So if you don't know them, that's okay. And if you are already familiar with them, that's fantastic. I'm gonna go through all the songs once or twice so that I know the words and you know the words and then we're gonna sing them together. So my first song today is going to be Hello Friends. It has some words in American Sign Language, so we're gonna practice our words together. The first word is hello. So we have our hand up with our palm facing out, fingers together. We're gonna to put our thumb over our palm and it's like we're giving a little salute. So just like that. So that's the word hello. Palm out, fingers together, thumb over our palm, and we give a salute. And then the word for friends, we take our pointer fingers and we turn them into little hooks. We hook them together and switch them. So that's the word for friends. And then it's time to say hello. Let's get started. Hello friends, hello friends, hello friends, it's time to say hello. Very good job. Okay, we're gonna do that one one more time. Hello friends, hello friends, hello friends, it's time to say hello. <laughs> Very good. Okay, we're going to move into a song that might be really familiar to you, but it might do it a different way. We're going to do Open Them, Shut Them. We're gonna get our hands all warmed up and get our fingers way out wide. Open them, shut them, open them, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open them, shut them, open them, shut them. Put them in your lap, lap, lap. Creep them, creep them, slowly creep them right up to your chin, chin, chin. Open wide your little mouth, but do not let them in. <laughs> Very good. One more time. Okay, so we're going to have our hands way out wide. Open them, shut them, open them, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open them, shut them, open them, shut them. Put them in your lap, lap, lap. Creep them, creep them, slowly creep them right up to your chin, chin, chin. Open wide your little mouth, but do not let them in. <laughs> Very good, okay. We're gonna do another finger play song that requires our hands to be way out wide. This little one is called 10 Little Fingers. I have 10 little fingers and they all belong to me. I can make them do things. Do you wanna see? I can squeeze them up tight. I can open them up wide. I can put them together and I can make them all hide. I can make them jump high. I can make them jump low. I can fold them up quietly and hold them just so. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Our last song before our first book is one that's going to be brand new to you. It's called Bread and Butter. So you don't need to know any of the words for this particular song. The only things you need to know are how to pat your lap, and clap your hands. And we've done that a couple times already. So you pat and clap. And you're gonna do that in a rhythm over and over and over again. The other thing you need to know is how to say hello. So we're gonna practice together. Hello! Wonderful. So we're gonna be saying hello a variety of different ways. We're gonna say it loud and soft. We're gonna say fast and slow and high and low. So we're gonna sing it all together. And remember, all you really need to know is how to pat your lap and clap your hands. So let's get started. So pat and clap. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as loud as you can. Hello! Bread and butter, 
marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as quiet as you can. Hello. Ooh, good, I didn't even hear you. Wonderful job. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as fast as you can. Hello. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as slow as you can. Hello. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as high as you can. Hello. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as low as you can. Hello. <laughs> Very good, my friends. All right, we're going to read our first book today. This is The Legend of Rock, Paper, Scissors. It's read with permission by HarperCollins Publishers. It's written by Drew Daywalt. He's the author, so he wrote all the words. And then Adam Rex is the illustrator. He drew all the pictures. All righty, let's get started. Long ago, in an ancient and distant realm called the Kingdom of Backyard, there lived a warrior named Rock. Rock was the strongest in all the land, but he was sad because no one could give him a worthy challenge. Rock traveled to the mysterious forest of over by the tire swing, where he met a warrior who hung on a rope holding a giant's underwear. Drop that underwear and battle me, you ridiculous wooden clip man! I will pinch you and make you cry, Rock Warrior! Rock versus Crow's Peg! Rock is victorious! Even though he had won, Rock was still unsatisfied. So he journeyed on to the mystical tower of Grandma's favorite apricot tree. There he was met by an odd and delicious fruit. You, sir, look like a fuzzy little bum. What? I challenge you to a duel. Then let us battle. Rock versus apricot. I will beat you, Rock, with my tart and tangy sweetness. Who do you think is gonna win? Is Apricot gonna win? I don't know. <gasps> Rock is victorious! Oh, I am smooshed. And yet, smooshing you has brought me no joy. Are you not entertained? They were entertained, but the battle had been too easy. So Rock left the kingdom of backyard and still in search of a worthy foe. Meanwhile, in the empire of Mon's study, on lonely and windswept Desk Mountain, a second great warrior sought the glory of battle, and his name was Paper. Even though he was the cleverest warrior in all the land, he was also sad because no one could outwit him. He set out across Desk Mountain to find his match. There he met a large and square monster. I gobble up the likes of you and spit them out every day, little paper. Oh, then taste my fury, giant box monster. Paper versus computer printer. No, not a paper jam. Paper is victorious. Having beaten the fiercest fighter of Desk Mountain, Paper climbed down to the pit of office rubbish bin, where he battled the most terrifying horde of creatures in all the land, the half-eaten bag of trio mix! Paper versus half-eaten bag of trio mix! Oh, foul wizard, he's blooded out the sun! Run for your lives, laddies! Paper wins again! Can no one beat me? And so, with a heavy heart, Paper departed the empire of Mom's study. At the same time in the kitchen realm, in the tiny village of Junk Drawer, there lived a third great warrior. They called her Scissors, and she was the fastest blade in all the land. She too was unchallenged. On this day, her first opponent was a strange and sticky circle man. 
Let us do battle, Yutaki, and vaguely round monstrosity. I will battle you, and I will leave you beaten and confused with my adhesive entangling powers. Scissors versus roll of tape! Scissors is victorious! Scissors forged on across the kitchen realm to the frigid wastes of refrigerator slash freezer. There she met her most fearsome adversaries yet. Dinosaurs made of frozen breaded chicken. I have come from the far reaches of kitchen to battle you, oh bizarre and yummy breaded dinosaurs. Bow before our child-pleasing shapes and flavors, Swordmaster. No one can resist our crunchy awesomeness. Scissors versus dinosaur-shaped chicken nuggets. Will the dinosaur-shaped chicken nuggets win? No, wait, no, they don't. Scissors is victorious again. Am I so good that not even dinosaur-shaped chicken nuggets can beat me? And so Scissors, like rock and paper before her, traveled beyond her own kingdom, seeking out a challenger who was her equal. Then one day, in the great cavern of two-car garage, Rock and Scissors came face to face. I hope you're wearing your battle pants, Rock Warrior. If by battle pants you mean no pants but I'm willing to fight you, then yes, yes, I am wearing my battle pants, weird scissory one. Rock versus Scissors! Do you know who wins? An epic and legendary battle ensued, but ultimately, Rock is victorious! You've made me so happy by beating me! I wish I felt your joy, Scissors, for I have yet to meet a warrior who can beat me. Hi there! Those are fighting words! Wait, what? Rock versus paper! What happened? This is the best day of my life! Thank you for winning, oh great knight of paper! Well, that's fine for you, but it looks as though no one will ever beat me. Not so fast, paper! Wait, what? Scissors versus paper! You beat me! And the three great warriors hugged each other and danced for joy and they became best friends. Finally, they had each met their matches. They were so happy, in fact, that they began to battle again. Round and round they went in the most massive and epic three-way battle of all time. And it is said that this joyous struggle still rages on to this very day. That is why children around the world, in back gardens, on playgrounds, and yes, even in classrooms, still honor the three great warriors by playing... Rock, paper, scissors. The end! So I hope you enjoyed that book. It's one of my favorites. Okay, so we are going to do another little song. This song is really nice if you have a stuffed animal friend with you. If not, another option is your grown-up who should be watching with you can put you on their lap and you can do it the same way that I'm going to be doing with my little Nuffle Bunny. Uh, but if you wanna do it yourself, you can go grab a favorite stuffed animal. You can get know, a little beanie baby, even a pillow. You could do it with a pillow too. So whatever works for you, we're going to be singing putting on a plate. So for this one, either your grown up and yourself will be moving or you will be moving your stuffed animal or your pillow. And first we're going to wibble wobble back and forth. Then we're going to carefully turn and then we're going to tiptoe. So for tiptoe, we're going to alternate lifting up our legs to do just a little bounce. And then for our last verse, you bounce up and down really fast. You can do a little lift, it doesn't have to be high, or you can bounce with your whole legs. Okay, so this is putting on a plate. Putting on a plate, putting on a plate. Wibble wobble, wibble wobble, putting on a plate. And then we turn. Sausage in a pan, sausage in a pan. Turn the sausage, turn the sausage, sausage in a pan. And then we alternate our legs. Rice in a bowl, rice in a bowl. Tiptoe, tiptoe, rice in a bowl. 
and then we bounce up and down. Popcorn in a pot, popcorn in a pot, pop, 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 pop popcorn in a pot. <laughs> Very good. All right, we're gonna do it one more time. Putting on a plate, putting on a plate. Wibble wobble, wibble wobble, putting on a plate. Sausage in a pan, sausage in a pan. Turn the sausage, turn the sausage, sausage in a pan. Rice in a bowl, rice in a bowl. Tiptoe, tiptoe, rice in a bowl. Popcorn in a pot, popcorn in a pot, pop, 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 popcorn in a pot. <laughs> Very good job. All right. You can put your stuffed animals or yourselves down. We're going to be all done with those. And I'll knock up when you can just sit up there. Next, we're going to do Dog's Colorful Day. This is one of my favorite little stories about getting messy and then getting all clean. So we're going to practice some of our colors and some of our counting. So this is our friend Dog. Dog has one black spot on his ear. So you can see his one black spot. But then he decided to go down for breakfast. And Dog sat under the table when someone was eating some strawberry jam and splat! A red drop of jam landed on his back. So now Dog has two spots. We're gonna count them together. He has one and two. And then after breakfast, Dog ran outside where someone was painting the door with blue paint. And Dog swished right by him and splash. He got a drop of blue paint on his tail. So now how many dots does Dog have? We're gonna count them. He has one, two, three dots so far. And then Dog decided to go to the park and he saw some grass that he really wanted to roll around in. So he went and he rolled around in the grass. And what do you think happened? Dog got another spot. Oh, he got a green spot right there. So we're gonna count the dots again. We have one, two, three, four dots. And then he decided to go say hi to a boy with a bar of chocolate. Let's put our chocolate right there. And what color dot do you think the dog might get from a bar of chocolate? Well, the boy went to go pet him and dog got a little brown spot right there. We're gonna count again. We have one, two, three, four, five dots. All right, so next while he was out playing, dog went by a bee. And the bee went swish and dropped just a little bit of pollen on him. So we have a little spot of yellow pollen. So we're gonna count again. We have one, two, three, four, five, six dots. All right, well, then Dog decided to go say hi to a little girl eating some ice cream. And what color do you think this next dot is gonna be? Well, the ice cream started melting and Dog got a little splash of pink ice cream. So we're gonna count again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dots. That's so many, but I think we're gonna add a couple more. So Dog on his way home went past someone who was playing in a puddle. So it jumped in the puddle and some of the puddle went up and splashed on Dog. So we got another little dot, a little gray dot of muddy puddle. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight colorful dots. And then dog accidentally stepped on a little carton of orange juice. And I think we know what color that dot's gonna be. Cause some of the juice squirted up and dog got an orange dot on his leg. So dog has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine little dots. And then dog walked past a little girl who was coloring with some markers. So dog accidentally got colored on just a little bit with a little purple. So we're gonna count our last time. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten little dots. Well, that's too many dogs, too many dots for dogs to have. So we're going to take all of these guys off and try and erase all of the dots that they made. So we're going to put dog in the bath. And what happens when you add soap to a bath? You get all clean. So now we need to take off all of our extra dots. And now how many dots does dog have? I think the appropriate number of dots for dog to have is just one. Oh, very good job. Wonderful, good listening. Okay. And so that's dog's colorful day. We're gonna set, oh, don't want it to fall over. That would be bad. So next, we're going to sing five little ducks. So I need your hand way out wide. We're gonna count my five fingers. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Five little ducks went out one day over the hills and far away. Mama duck said, quack, 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 but only four little ducks came back. We had five and we took away one and now we have four. Four little ducks went out one day over the hills and far away. Mama duck said, quack, 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 but only three little ducks came back. So we had five, we took away two, and now we have three. Three little ducks went out one day over the hills and far away. Mama duck said, quack, 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 but only two little ducks came back. So we had five, we took away three, and now we have two. Two little ducks went out one day over the hills and far away. Mama duck said, quack, 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 but only one little duck came back. So we had five, we took away four, and now we have one. One little duck went out one day over the hills and far away. Mama duck said, quack, 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 but none of her five little ducks came back. Well, we don't want to end there, do we? No, that's, that's sad. We don't want that. All right. Mama duck went out one day over the hills and far away. Mama duck said quack, 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 quack. And all of her five little ducks came back. <laughs> Yay, very good. Okay, so we're going to move on to my second book. We have The Princess and the Pony. This is a uh, read from permission by Arthur A. Levine Books, which is from Scholastic. It's written by Kate Beaton. She wrote the words and drew the pictures, so she is both the author and the illustrator. And this book has everything. It has princesses, it has ponies, it has great battles. So I think you're gonna enjoy it. Okay. In a kingdom of warriors, the smallest warrior was Princess Pinecone, and she was very excited for her birthday. Most warriors get fantastic birthday presents. Shields, amulets, helmets with horns on them. Things to win battles with. Things that make them feel like champions. Princess Pinecone got a lot of cozy sweaters. Warriors do not need cozy sweaters. This year, it would be different. Pinecone made sure to let everyone know exactly what she wanted. A big horse a fast horse, a strong horse, a real warrior's horse. And they tried their best, but they didn't get it quite right. Does that look like a, 
a strong horse or a fast horse? Maybe not. I can't ride that, said Princess Pinecone. It's too small. It's too round. I think its eyes are looking in different directions. This was true, but only sometimes. But you can't say no to a birthday present, so she took the little pony to her room where it ate things it shouldn't have and farted too much. Now, as it happens, a great battle was coming up, and battling is a warrior's favorite thing to do. The princess tried to teach the pony how to be a real warrior horse. But the pony was hopeless. We'll never be champions, Pinecone sighed. The day of the great battle arrived, and all the other warriors seemed very big and very tough. Just do your best, she told the pony. The starting horn sounded, and what a battle it was! There were dodgeballs and spitballs and hairballs and square balls. Those were new. People were getting knocked over left and right. Pinecone stood at the edge, looking for her chance to dive in. Just then, Otto the Awful, the meanest warrior of all, charged right for her. The crowd held its breath. Pinecone fumbled for her spitballs. But Otto stopped in his tracks. His eyes grew very wide. Aw, he said, what a cute little pony. Who would want to hurt a roly-poly pony like you? Warrior after warrior paused to admire the pony. What a cutie pie, said Sally Smash. He's so round, said Carlos the Cruel. Oh, he looks a bit like me, said Hugh Gerald. Pinecone was flabbergasted, flummoxed, floored. This is not how battle usually goes, she said. You're right, said Otto. But we warriors don't often get a chance to show our cuddly sides. Princess Pinecone thought about it. Well, she said. I can help you with that. Soon, all the warriors had their own cozy sweaters. They were looking pretty cuddly for a bunch of roots. Everyone voted Pinecone and the pony the most valuable warriors of the day. Pinecone threw her arms around the pony. You're the best horse a warrior could ask for, she cheered. Nothing can stop a team like us. The little pony was so excited, it's, it lifted its tail and farted. Well, said Pinecone, we can work on that. The end. So that was the princess and the pony. Alrighty. So we're going to do one little short song before my last book today. All right. So this is a little counting song, but it also has a couple colors. So we're going to start with one. One little red fish swimming through the water, swimming through the water, swimming through the water. One little red fish swimming through the water, bubble, 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 pop. And now we have two. Two little blue fish swimming through the water, swimming through the water, swimming through the water. Two little blue fish swimming through the water, bubble, 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 pop. And now we have three. Three little yellow fish swimming through the water, swimming through the water, swimming through the water. Three little yellow fish swimming through the water. Bubble, 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 pop. Very good. So if you want to try that song again at home, try thinking about maybe there's other colors you could include or maybe patterns. So you could have four green fish or maybe five polka dot fish. See what you can come up with and let me know. All right. So our last book today is Harriet Gets Carried Away. It's written by Jessie Seema, an absolutely amazing author. Um, so she wrote the words and drew the pictures, and this is read with permission from Simon and Schuster. Okay. Harriet loved costumes. She didn't save them for Halloween or only wear them to dress up birthday parties. Harriet wore costumes all the time. On the morning of her own dress up birthday party, Harriet was a busy bee. 
We still need to pick up some snacks from the grocery store, her dad said. And lots of party hats, Harry added. Her dad shared a look. Okay, they said, but don't get carried away. Harriet was sure she could manage that. She changed into her extra special errant running costume, straightened her bow tie, waddled down the street, through the subway, and into the store. Her dad seemed to have the deli counter covered, so Harriet set out on a quest for the perfect party hats. But instead, she found something else. What did she find? A whole bunch of penguins. Harriet forgot all about party hats. She waddled past the checkout lines and out of town. Where are we going? Harry asked excitedly. Back home, of course, a penguin answered. The city is a nice place to visit, but I wouldn't want to live there. As the balloons floated farther from the city, Harriet's thoughts floated back to her birthday party. Excuse me, said Harriet. I don't think I belong here. That's okay, the penguins replied. Everyone feels like they don't fit in sometimes. Maybe you should lose the bow tie. But Harriet didn't care about fitting in. She cared about getting back to the store. So she straightened her bow tie and hatched a plan. And another. Things were not going smoothly. Harriet was almost out of ideas when one emerged from the sea. Hey, said the orca, you're not a penguin. How did you know, cried Harriet. Penguins don't wear bow ties, he replied. Harriet realized this orca might just be her ticket home. So she told him her tale of costumes and penguins and hot air balloons. She told him all about her family and her city and the party hats she needed to find. And when her story was finished, she said, I could really use a lift. It just so happens I'm heading up north for a family reunion, replied the orca. I could drop you off along the way in exchange for a fancy red bow tie. That seemed a fair trade. As the orca swam, Harriet daydreamed. Once Harriet could make out the city in the distance, the orca came to a halt. This is as far as I can go, he said. So Harriet called in a favor from some friends she knew from the park. We'll take her from here, they said. Look, Harriet's getting a little lift all the way to the city. Harriet soared back into the store and headed straight for the party hats. It didn't take long to pick out the perfect ones. She found her dads at the deli just where she'd left them. Where did you sneak off to, they asked. I just went to get the party hats, said Harriet. Oh, and I could use a new bow tie. With hats in hand, Harriet waddled back through the subway, up the street, and into her room. She put on her birthday party costume, straightened her party hat, and headed up to the roof. The party was a great success, and no one got carried away. Except maybe Olivia. The end. So that was Harriet Gets Carried Away. All right. So if you're a fan of penguins, you can come pick up our little penguin craft at the drive through window or in the atrium. Our last song today is I Am Special. So this one's really easy. It's to the tune of Frere Jaca, if you remember that song. So it just a involves a little bit of pointing. So we start with our pointer fingers up in the air. I am special, I am special. You can see, you can see. Someone very special, someone very special. That is me, that is me. Very good. Thank you so much for joining me for story time. I know I was a little long, I get very excited. I get carried away sometimes. So we hope to see you at the library again sometime soon. Bye.